Well, I think the thing about the Eurovision Song Contest is every country has one singer, right, or at least one group. And the thing about Russia's relationship with its periphery is that it's very clear in its identity that it is the big country with sort of little bits around it. You know, size is important. So um, the parity of Eurovision Song Contest is where Ukraine can win or little Estonia can win or Azerbaijan can win. I think that's a bit irritating. Um, but it's also, as we know, overladen with politics. My partner always used to joke, she'd say, um, oh, Bridget, you know, you like to come and watch Eurovision Song Contest because you're just fascinated by the diplomatic story that's going on. You know, oh, how interesting that Slovakia is supporting Ukraine, or whatever it might be. Um, it is actually a kind of soft power di diplomat. We, we all know how, how they vote in blocks. And um, for the Russians nowadays, um, their position turning westwards is, 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 you know, it's uncomfortable. I mean, I haven't gone into that, but I think a lot of Russians would say, as Mr. Putin did in the early 2000s, that we feel European. We've just got this row with NATO or the European Union, but we, sh we should be part of European culture. You do now find some people, I, I, I had didn't, a fascinating interview with one film director who said, oh no, we're not really European, we've always been Asian. I said, well, what about Tolstoy? He said, oh no, that was a 200 year aberration. <laughs> that was started with Peter the Great. You, know, you, can, you can invent any narrative. But I, I think that um, they, they kind of want to be part of Europe and loved. And if they're not loved in the Eurovision Song Contest because all these small republics, many of whom have reason to feel antagonistic towards Russia, vote against them, then that's annoying. So it's, it's, it, it is quite political. 